One, two, three. Hallelujah! Clap for the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Let's all be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for blessing us, blessing us to be here this morning. Thank you for giving us yet another opportunity to sit at your feet and to receive fresh rhema from heaven. I bind the work of the devil right now in the name of Jesus, that there be no distractions, but that your word would go forth and accomplish that which you sent it to. We thank you, Lord, and we surrender to the power of the Holy Ghost now in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Clap for the Lord. Amen. All right, praise God. Look at your name and say, get your Bible out. All right, praise the Lord. Um, God has always got great things in store for us, and, you know, we love him. And how many of y'all love God? Amen. I mean, you really do, right? You say, man. How many of y'all can say, you know, God, okay, let me just say this for a second. How many of you just sometimes you just pause and you think about how good he's been to you? Any, does that happen every? Because, you know, we live in a busy world and you always got stuff to do, but sometimes you just stop and say, man. And if you think about it enough, you can get emotional. Because you can start saying, dang, God has been so good to me. It was, it was so many things that he did for me, helped me. And how many of y'all been helped when you weren't even deserving of help? Yeah. Come on, tell the truth. But he still came through. How many of y'all messed up, but then God cleaned you up and didn't love you any less? Oh, anybody in here? And see, come on, this is a God that we serve, and this is, in my opinion, this is something we ought to be excited about because I think sometimes people forget, like, how long ago was it when God did all of that for you? And if you don't, stay mindful of those things, then you can fall into a dangerous place, which is complacency. And you can become complacent, and then now all of a sudden your relationship with God becomes mundane. And so God is looking at keeping the fire burning in your relationship, your relationship with him. He wants you to stay passionate about him. He wants you to be as excited about him today as you were when you first met him or when you first had that breakthrough or when he did something that you couldn't get out of. He wants you to stay. You have to keep that sense of urgency. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, uh, I'm going to preach this message this morning entitled Power to Continue. Power to Continue. And uh, I think we prayed. We already prayed, right? Didn't I pray? Yeah, we pray. We pray. Yeah. You's out there probably handling business out there. But um, power to continue. So now what's important for us to understand is we don't just like Christianity is not something we just sign up for. And then you go in there and you sign up for it and, and they say, oh, you're all good to go. You're free to go. No, this is something you got to stay with. This is something that you've got to have power to continue. And so let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 in the NLT. And we want to stay focused on this. We want to be those people that have understood what it is that we actually signed up for. We didn't just sign up for something that's just going to get us through a fix or a tough situation. This is a life change. He says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith. Stop right there. So this is coming off the faith chapter, which is in uh, Hebrews 11. So you read all that stuff, and you'll read that chapter. I challenge you to read it on your own. But you'll be reading that stuff, and then you'll go, man, this is great. But then you'll start continuing to read, and it's like some of the people, they believed, but they didn't even get to see what they were believing for. Amen? They had, so what does that mean? They had to have the power to believe to the end. Because what if you're believing God, but it seems like the things that you want are not manifesting? Well, if you change what you believe, then you miss it because your true reward is eternity with him. Amen. And that is why even Stephen in the book of Acts, Stephen was being stoned. But Stephen, even in the midst of that, he says, don't hold this against these people that are doing this. And his eyes were on God and he saw the heavens open. And so what you have to do is you have to understand that 
I've signed up for something that is not contingent upon what I'm going through, amen? It's not contingent upon how I feel. No, this is the truth, and I believe Jesus is Lord, and even if he don't do nothing for me, I'm going to still believe. But you have people today that become fickle. They're fickle with their walk with God. I was going to church, but then I messed around and had this happen and that happen, and so I don't go anymore. Well, what's that got to do with God? And what does that have to do with your eternity? Let me tell you this, your eternity is a lot longer than your time on earth. And so if you have a few bad experiences here, don't let those dictate your eternity. And so he is saying, we are coming off of this witness of all these people that have done all these things by faith and even some of them gave up their lives still yet believing. But since that's the witness that you have to this life of faith, so this life of faith is not just about naming the car you want, naming the house you want. This is about enduring. This is about continuing. This is about staying with Jesus. Come on, somebody, when your family, your whole family turns on Jesus, but what you doing? When, when the communities are turning on Jesus, but what are you doing? This is about staying with Jesus when it's not popular. Amen. See, in the beginning, the life of faith was very unpopular. If you, that's why Jesus, uh, Peter denied him. They said, man, we know you were with him. He said, no, not me, because it was very unpopular. But when you have power to continue, you stay with it. And your fire never goes out. You're going to stay just as passionate about God today as when you first started. But you got to learn to continue. And so since we're surrounded by such a huge crowd of witness to this life of faith, let us strip off every weight. See that? Let us strip off every weight. What? That slows us down. So I'll give you an example of a weight that will slow you down. One is a fence. So people are offended by what somebody has done, and so they're upset, but then now they don't know that that's affecting their faith walk. The person who offended you is not affected, but you are. And so that sin of offense will trip you up. And God is saying, come on, we walk by faith and not by sight. I need you to keep up with me. But then now you got offense. Here's another thing. You have unforgiveness. See, you're waiting for people to do right by you before you forgive them. But that's not what Jesus did. Jesus said, forgive them for they know not what they do. So why would we as a people be waiting for someone else to do right by us? Well, you know, they're going to make it right because they shouldn't have said that. So when they call me and ask for my apology, I'll give it to them. No, you forgive them in advance. So therefore, they're Y'all in here with me? They're out of your way. But if you don't forgive them, they're in your way and they're blocking the traveling or the, the, the victories that God wants to take you into. Amen? And so forgiveness is a part of that something you have to accept, accept a sin that so easily besets us. So anything that's throwing you off, you got to get it out of the way, out of the way. Strip it off, get it out of the way. The things that slow you down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. Another, it, for some others, it could be anger. It could be whatever it is, but you got to understand, this thing is affecting me the most. So I'm going to get rid of anger. I'm going to get rid of fear. Come on, people have fear. But you got to understand, fear is not of God. And so fear can be used by the devil to trip you up and to keep you from getting to your wealthy place that God has for you. And so you've got to get rid of all of that stuff. And then what does it say? And let us run. Look at your name and say you got to run. Now, this doesn't mean run from stuff. This means run towards Jesus. This is a race that God puts you in. He says, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. So I've got to have endurance. And so I need power to continue. I cannot just show up to church for two weeks and then miss for the next two. I can't, oh, come on, man. I'm trying to help y'all. 
You, you got to lock into this. You got to see this is a way of life. I'm committed. And you know what? The enemy's going to try to do all kind of stuff to trip you up. He's going to mess with your schedule. He's going to mess with all this stuff. But when you understand I've been given power to continue, then that, guess what? The devil's going to bow. Come on, somebody. He's going to bow. That's why I give you guys all these challenges at this church. I give you opportunities to press. And if you are pressing, guess what you're going to feel? Fatigue. You're going to feel challenged. You're going to be irritable sometimes. Well, that's when you know you're pressing. Because if it don't cost you nothing, it ain't worth nothing. And so we live in a world today where people want an easy gospel. They want to come to church if it's convenient. But ain't nothing convenient about this. But if I learn to press the way God, boy, this will have you doing stuff that people don't want you to do. This will have you standing up, come on, laying down the law of the land when it ain't popular. But you got to understand, God will give you power to continue because let me just tell you this. If you don't continue, you ain't going to make it. Now this may be... Uh, somewhat controversial in terms of some doctrines that are out there, but you don't go to God and get a lick and a promise and think you're good for the rest of your life. If you're going to get saved, you better learn how to stay saved. Because people can say stuff with their mouth and they ain't say nothing with their heart. Because if you said it with your heart, then you're gonna, we're going to see some fruit. We're going to see a life change in you. Amen. I know good and well there ain't no way I would have made it to heaven. I said the sinner's prayer when I was 15. But I said it with my mouth. My heart was nowhere in that. Because the first thing I said after that was, what does this mean? Does that mean I can't do certain things? Because I'm now just, you know, starting to get real popular. <laughs> and uh, so I just, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm not trying to mess up no flow that I got going on right now. And my sister said, oh, you know, God, will, you know, God or whatever. And I said, okay. But I said some words with my mouth, but my heart wasn't in it. So I know for sure if I would have died from 15 on to when I really got saved in my 20s, I would have been in hell. Because it's not about saying a prayer. It's about giving up a heart. It's about God getting a hold of you and taking over. Amen. And so, see, what I understand is, man, I got to know what this is, but then I got to run this race that God has set before me and I have to run it with endurance. It's my race. Come on. Look at your name and say, this is my race, not yours. Man, it's my race. So I can't be worried about y'all. I can't be worried about y'all and, oh, uh, well, I don't want to offend the church. Or I don't want to do this. And, well, let me check with the uh, church committee. We ain't got no church committees, man. Let's, let's get a meeting. What are we meeting for? If I'm going to gather a meeting, I'm going to teach you the Bible. I don't need to get no meeting to get y'all's opinion. Have you guys seen an opinion box around here anywhere? Like they do at, re at restaurants? A suggestion box. If I don't get it from God, I don't need it. And, and if I got to get it from you, you don't need me as your leader. Because I'm going to be listening to you tell me what to do. But as long as you know I'm hearing from God, and I challenge anybody... Take what you get from me and then go take it back to God and ask him if that was true and see what he tells you. And that's the way we do it. Amen. And that is going to help us stay in the position that we need to stay in. And so I got to run my race. You got to run yours. So here's another thing. When you're running that race, I used to run track when I was young. But we learned that if I look over here, I start losing. Now, I remember winning, a, a, I was a, the fourth leg on a, the sprint team or whatever. But, man, they gave me such a lead. I was just like, dang, I'm just out here. But I made the mistake of just looking back, and I got drilled by the coach. I'm just thinking I, we won. Like, yeah, we won. No, I got drilled. Because that looking back, could, I could have tripped. I could have did anything. And that's the way it is with your, your walk with God. Anything. There are going to be people that will come and try to get you to look over here. They're like, ah, la, 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 la. look over here. And they want you to look over there out your side mirror or side window. And guess what? 
you don't see this big old thing in front of you, which is telling you there is a tire in the road. Like somebody's rim fell off. But you was over there looking because somebody didn't move fast enough at the, at when the red light changed. You know how you are, some of the, the red light changes and they don't go and you're like, bam. And then you get around them and you look, what's what they doing? Texting or something? And then bam, you run over that tire that's in the road. And now your whole, come on somebody. Now you didn't mess around and ruined your front end on your car. Why? Just from a simple distraction. You just don't know how many things the enemy is causing God's people to miss. Because they lack the ability to focus. And the reason he says run that race with endurance is because how many of y'all know when you get tired, you get out of focus? And so you have to have endurance so that you don't get tired. So I can stay. Okay, I'm pacing myself. I'm staying and I can pay attention to the course that God has me on. And so you have to run your race. You have to continue. Let's look at this Hebrews 12, 2, just verses 2, 12, 2 in the Amplified Classic. So he says, uh, so what you got to do as I'm running my race, he says, look away from all that will distract. Man. Look away from all that will distract. There's going to be plenty of things to distract you, to move you off. And, you know, you could take one turn and get lost. Anybody here with me? Amen. And sometimes it's going to take you a minute to get back on track. You, you'll notice that if you're driving, if you're ever driving in L.A. with the way this freeway, those freeways change. I, I never like driving up there, but you know what? You mess around driving up there and, and you're like, ah, and you just get on the wrong one. Then you're like, ah, oh, man, you're going the wrong way. And then you're like, Man, let me just, you think you could just get off and turn, no, you, you messed up. So now it's going to take you a minute to get back on track. That's what the enemy is doing. See, he will distract you, and if you get off course, you may think, I'm just slightly off. But you being slightly off can end you up in a place you never wanted to be. That's why you have to have endurance. You have to stay on track. He'll do little things. He'll, I, I've seen this happen in the lives of people. So there are people that made a commitment. That's it, I'm going all in with God. I have to, man, because, you know, I know I need God to do some great things and I'm going to go all in. But the enemy will hit you with a little distraction. And that little distraction will throw you off. And so now you're not pressing like you used to. Now all of a sudden you wake up and it's, oh man, it's been two months, and I ain't been doing what I used to do, man. I was on fire with God. I was going to church on Sunday. I was going on Wednesday. I was even trying to get out there on outreach. But then you, bam, something happens, and what? It's a distraction. Oh, pastor, well, you know, God knows we have stuff to do and all that. You do what you do. Ain't nobody trying to make you do nothing. I'm giving you an opportunity. So what I've decided is my victory is more important than the distractions of the devil. So I've learned to put things in check. Amen. No, you don't run my schedule. That's what you got to tell the enemy. See, if you, the things you commit to, you'll succeed at them. So any of y'all here, you commit, you commit to making it to church, say, I'm a, I'm always, I always go to church. Mm -hmm. And guess what? You'll rarely miss. It'll be a strange occurrence for you not to be here. But if you don't make that decision, any little thing, any little thing could throw you out. Oh, you know, I was going to come, but we had too much traffic on Winchester. <laughs> but our, our church is right off of Winchester. I mean, you would have got there eventually. It's going to take you more time to turn around than to just go through it. You see what I'm saying? And so he says, looking away. So when I'm running, I got to look away from everything that would distract. Looking away from all that would distract. But who am I looking to? Oh, I say if the church had been looking at Jesus this whole time, we wouldn't be in the mess we're in now. 
If we was looking at Jesus, man, we're not, we're not supposed to be looking at celebrities and all these. No, man, I'm just looking at Jesus. That's it. Looking away from all that was a distract, looking to Jesus, who is the leader. Who's your leader? See that? That's powerful. When the devil knows that you got somebody else as your leader, he knows how to set you up with that. But when you mess around and say, no, Jesus is my leader. So what does that mean? If a pastor fails, I'm just not going to that church no more, but I'm staying with Jesus. So you don't have some people where the pastor failed, had an affair, did something crazy, and then the people left Jesus. And Jesus is like, did I do that? I didn't do nothing to you. But now y'all mad at me. You know the devil can get in there and manipulate pastors. You know how pastors make themselves vulnerable to that deception? Is they stop looking at Jesus as their leader. They start looking in the mirror and thinking that they see their own leader. See, the, the safest thing a pastor can do is stay humble. And so I depend on Jesus just as much as I tell you to depend on him. I never get comfortable. I'm waking up every day like a little child. Crying out, Abba, Father. If I ever wake up with too much confidence, I'm going to go back to bed. <laughs> so I'm not, we ain't going nowhere with this. I'm going back. You, need, you must have been dreaming too good. Go back to sleep. Because we must stay in that place of being humbly dependent on God. Looking to Jesus, who is the leader and the source. Y'all in here with me today. He's the leader and the source. Man, the source of my faith ain't my church. The source of my faith ain't the praise team. The source of my faith is Jesus. That's the source of my faith. That's the reason I exist. That's the reason I get up. That's the reason I walk and go into wherever he leads me. Because he is the source of our faith. Giving the first incentive for our belief, he demonstrated and is also its finisher. He's the finisher. He's the beginning and the ending of your faith. He's the finisher, bringing it to maturity and perfection. Jesus is perfecting faith in you. Not how many Bible verses you know, how many books you read. No, no, it's Jesus perfecting that. You can only go as far as Jesus empowers you to go. He is the joy, or he for the joy of obtaining the prize that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame and ignoring, or ignoring the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of God. And so now, real quick, just flip over to, back to Hebrews 12 in the King James, but just go to verse 3. I think it's verse 3, or it might be verse, the end of verse 2, but I want to, I, I forgot to bring out a key point. Okay, next verse. Uh, okay. There it is. I forgot to give them this. So now, we're talking about Jesus. Now it says, For consider him that endured such contradiction from sinners against himself. So when now you're running this faith race, you're living this life, sometimes you get weary. Sometimes you get tired. Oh, it's hard. It's hard. Well, you know what that, for me, every time I think something is hard, I think about Jesus. I say, man, it's difficult. It's, it just seems like these things aren't working out. Then I think of Jesus. Then I say, oh, I ain't got no problems. Come on, how many of y'all in here with me? Oh, I ain't got no problems. And then that keeps you grounded. So I'm going to consider him who endure, endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. See, you're not going to faint in your minds. Can you put it up in the NLT, that verse 3? You're not going to faint in your mind because you're going to consider Jesus. Amen? You're going to consider Jesus. So think of the hostility. Y'all, you ever think about this? Sometimes we don't think about the sacrifice of Jesus until it's Easter. But this was serious, man. He, this, the books can't even really explain all that he endured. 
Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people, then you won't become weary. So if you think of Jesus, you won't become weary. And then what? Huh? And give up. What are people doing today? Give up. You, you, you got a marriage and you run into some difficulty when people talk about, oh, this is over. Well, what if Jesus said that about you? You know, I was really trying. I was really trying to help this person, but I'm, you know, and Jesus went to the Father and he just said, you know, Father, I was really helping this one, but this man is so disobedient that I'm just out of energy. I can no longer deal with him. Hmm? So what did he do? Oh, we're in the sanctified church. Uh, he, Pastor, you're talking about someone else. Wasn't me. But Jesus had to have a whole lot of patience to deal with the majority of people in his church. But yet, the Father never let him quit. The Father never let him give up. So then, if we understand, let's say we're walking our walk, we're doing what God's called us to do, it seems like it's difficult. Maybe we get frustrated with people or we think they should be on some level that they're not, but then now I've got to consider Jesus. And so, whenever you might be dealing with somebody that's not where you think they should be, don't think about them. Think about Jesus, who endured all this hostility from sinful people, and he still made it, so then for you, you won't become weary and give up. Now, I like the way they put the words together, you won't become weary, because what happens is people get weary, and then they give up. People don't typically give up when they're fully energized. They have to get weary. And so it's like, man, I'm tired of doing this. I mean, it seems like it's the same old problems. Same old thing over and over again. And the enemy's trying to get you to become weary so that now it's easier for you to give up. But if I'm looking to Jesus, I won't give up. Come on. Look at your name and say, look to Jesus. Come on, then you won't give up. Man, that's, that's the key to it. So look away from all that would distract. That was in the Amplify. But, so if I'm running this race, I'm looking at Jesus, I'm not going to get weary, but I got to make sure I look away from all that will distract. And so the word distract means to draw away or divert. Now I've already told you, it don't take a lot for you to get lost. You could just veer off and end up somewhere you didn't want to be. So you got to look away from everything that distracts. Now, the enemy uses distraction. Amen? The enemy uses distraction. Come on, how many of y'all have ever seen this? How many of you ever been in a, trying to have a conversation? This is especially if you got kids. I remember this. But you could be talking about something. Then you got to pay attention to when the, the kids interrupt you. Oh, come on. They don't interrupt when you was just talking about the score of the football game. Okay. They typically don't interrupt on that because that ain't that important. <laughs> but you start talking something important. Uh, come on, man. Don't be in denial. Don't be thinking, oh, my kid. Listen, the enemy will manipulate situations. See? Doesn't mean your kid got a devil. <laughs> I ain't, ain't nobody said that. It mean, I'm saying the enemy will use situations. He knows how to manipulate stuff. And so you could be in the heat of something and you trying to make an important point and then here go the kid. <laughs> now you're like, why did that happen? <laughs> and you telling them, be quiet. But then when you say be quiet, then you try to go back to your conversation. Come on. And the anointing has lifted. I can say these things because I raised, me, me and my wife raised our kids, so. Okay, now y'all say, pastor's not really sensitive with the kids. He don't know. Man, I got four grown kids. Amen? Amen. So sometimes, now I will say this, don't be taking no advice from people that haven't done what you're doing. 
So don't be taking no advice from somebody in regards to parenting your children who has no children. Oh, y'all. No, but that's my auntie, and she just, she's very wise. She ain't that wise. She ain't got no kids. So when it comes to you raising kids, you don't be listening to no auntie that ain't got no kids. She ain't getting up, she ain't getting up at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. and dealing with no kids. She ain't got no kids. She want to advise you, you really need to get this child in check. That's easy for somebody to say that has no children. But you take advice from people. Now, me and my wife, we raise our kids. That's why we, we do have, you know, we try to offer sometimes input if it's welcomed. But we're not talking out the side of our neck. We know what we're talking about. Amen? Amen. And then you got to train them early. I've said this all these years. I've been telling all these people. I said, hey, don't be letting your kids do all these activities on Sunday. Because you got to train them that they're supposed to go to church. Because guess what's going to happen? Pretty soon, them little activities they're doing, they're not going to be doing them anymore. Oh, well, you know, um, they, they could have a chance to go pro. But that chance is so slim that you're spending all that time on them going pro. And there's a, man, a point zero 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 something of a chance. But... I saw one sign that said, uh, somebody showed it to me on Instagram or something, but they have a zero, zero point chance of making it to the pro athlete or something, but they have a 100% chance of going to hell if they don't got Jesus. I said, whoa! So what should I spend my time on? Prioritizing, man. This is what we do, amen? This is all part of running your race, but you, people get distracted. Kids coming up, and what is it? All of a sudden, there's a special baseball league. This is the gold standard of baseball. <laughs> but we only have our games on Sundays, so I'm just saying. But your little Johnny, is he needs to be on this gold standard team. So I'm that dad that's saying, oh, when is the practice or when is the game, the game Sunday? Oh, uh, we won't be there. Oh, no, I don't think you understand, sir. This is the only time. Okay, I don't think you understand. Fill my child's position. Get someone else because we won't be there. Why? Because my kids are going to need church for the rest of their life. So I'm not going to sell my kids out by jumping into all these activities and now all of a sudden, Kids don't go to church no more. Parents don't go to church. Where you been? On, on my, my son's travel team. Just traveling around and all that. Just traveling around and getting influenced by the devil. Amen? Think about it. We, we, this stuff I'm talking about, the kingdom is what's going to last. So we need to prioritize. That's why I've told people, don't be working on Sundays. I mean, if they do it, if you have to work every blue moon, let it be every blue moon, though. But I've actually told people, do not take a job if they say you have to work on Sunday. Oh, but I, but I have to provide for my family. No, you need to be in the blessing. Amen. Because if you're not in the blessing, even working on Saturday and Sunday, and you still ain't going to have enough money. But when you prioritize, no, I'm a, I'm a child of the king. I obey my father. So guess what? We go to church on Sunday. Amen. Hmm? And then guess what? I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor a seed begging bread. You're not going to lack, but remember, it's just a distraction. Come on now. But I've never made this much money. They're just giving me such a high pay rate. But what is the cost? You don't look at the pay. You look at the cost. What is it going to cost me to take this job? Amen. And then you find out, I have missed the mark. Amen? Now, I'm not speaking to you as someone who's just talking out the side of his neck. I made that decision. Raised my kids like that. Told my kids the same thing. And that's a practice. That's something that we've developed. And we haven't had to go without. We haven't had to lack but we've stayed committed. And so you learn the power of commitment. Once again, things may come up to where you can't go to church. That's okay. You got to, you know, like my son had to pick up his wife and, and his son from the airport today. 
I said, hey, that's all right. But he ain't about to be picking them up every Sunday. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Every Sunday, so we're going to have to change these traveling plans or something. You see what I mean? And so it's what we do habitually. That's all a part of running our race. And we got to look away from those things that are distracting us, that are throwing us off course. Because the enemy is busy about trying to get you off track. That's all he wants to do. He wants to get you off track. Because if you don't stay on track, you can't get the prize. You can't win. And so you have to stay. It's not just running any old kind of race. You got to run it the way God said. Amen. There's rules, right? There's, you know, speaking of track, let's say you want to run track and, and you're out there and, they, and, and there's a, you got to know what race is happening. Yeah. So like there's something called the 400, which is different than the 200. But you just said, I'm, I'm in shape, so I'm just going to jump in there. And you run the 200. But then you realize when you stop, everybody kept going. And so you're like, well, why are they kidding? I beat all of them. I beat everybody to this part. But you still had a whole nother half of a race to run. You didn't pay attention, so you don't dictate the rules. And that's the way it is in the kingdom. We can't just be making it up. Well, I, you know, I don't really believe that I have to go to church. I don't really have to do all this tithing stuff. I don't have to do all. Are you just making up your own rules? Like, Wow. How is that happening? Then you wonder why ain't nothing working for you. Amen. You don't win unless you do it God's way. Amen? Amen? And don't be paying attention to these distractions. The enemy is trying to get you to be off you know, track. Like I said, I, I, I speak of it briefly, but he even tries. I see what he does to God's people during this time. He even tries to get you to focus on politics instead of the kingdom. You don't need to do that. You need to focus on the kingdom because I said it earlier, but elections come and they go, but the kingdom is forever. So we're going to be talking about this for the duration. Some of y'all have been around me for many years. You've been hearing the same stuff. You're like, pastor, man, he, I'm, he's still preaching the same stuff. Cause I don't need to change to fit trends or nothing. It's the same stuff. Just run it back. Run it back. Run it back. It's the ways because now it's you learning that and putting that into practice. Why? Because this is a life change. And now we want to help you. I want to help you as your pastor to learn how to become consistent. Amen. How many of you know it's beneficial when you are consistent with your mood? Yeah. Especially you, if you have other people that have to deal with you. <laughs> you ever met... Some of those people, you know, like, let's say it's a coworker. I know some of y'all automatically start thinking about your spouse, but I'm not talking about your spouse. Um, <laughs> I'm talking about, let's put it on a coworker. You know, sometimes they're having a good day. Sometimes they're having a bad. You ever met those people where you know when something ain't right with them? Because there are some people, they don't know how to, you know, some people... They don't, you won't ever know anything's wrong with them because they don't change. You don't never know what they're going through. But then there's other ones, they don't even have to talk. You see them and you say, oh, it's a whew, bad day today, man. He, even their walk changes. You haven't seen people, they, their walk changes. They, you know, got that stink on them and they don't even walk the same. But we want to be consistent. We want, you know, the way Jesus was, he was consistent. They didn't know that it was hard for him. They didn't really know that he was struggling in certain times. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do as Christians, we want to be consistent. What if, let's say you're at work, and God started doing this to me, when I would be calling myself to have a, you know, having a bad day, that's when God sends somebody for me to witness to. And in my in myself, I'm like, I do not feel like talking to this person because I'm going through a little something. But I learned to surrender to the will of God. And so all of a sudden I became more interested in their problems and 
by me taking interest in their problems, I forgot about mine. And then what I learned is that, oh, so now God used that. See, I thought I was helping them, but God sent them over here to help me. Oh, come on, somebody, because the reason he sent them over there is so that you get out your pity party and get back on your assignment. Amen. And that's why he does that, because he don't want to give you no time to be moping. Now, if you're open, he'll do that to you all the time. Next thing you know, you helping somebody else, you telling them stuff that you know you needed to hear. <laughs> See, that's how this works. And so consistency is your key to victory. You must keep your mind stayed on Jesus. How, how long, Pastor? How long God do this? How long you guys got to stay focused on Jesus? Huh? Well, just two weeks, three, I mean... It's got to be your new way. Because listen, regardless of what people have said or tried to teach, this is not about how you start. This is about how you finish. Because a lot of people will start out. How many of y'all have heard some people, they started out, it seemed like they were doing good. Some powerful pastors, they seemed like they were very powerful. They didn't finish. Amen? They changed. I remember... Uh, what was that guy's name? Carl, Carlton Pierce or something like that it was. Pearson or something. But man, I remember back in the day when I was first getting into like faith teaching and stuff like that. I remember he was powerful. He was bringing it. And then he messed around and lost his mind and came up with some other crazy stuff. And finished his days in a state that I don't believe God would have had him finish in. So it doesn't matter how many people he might have helped in that beginning. What's your end like? What is your end like? So now this man laying on his deathbed, but he changed his doctrine into where now, you know what? There's no need for repentance because, you know, God doesn't care about any of your sin. Whatever you want to do, it's OK. Huh? That ain't in this Bible. So wouldn't that, isn't that a shame if you were used by God to preach to thousands, but in your last days, you drop the ball and slide into hell? What a waste. So it's not how you start. So it's how you finish. But you got to learn to continue. Along the way, I'm standing this thing, man. I, listen, I'm going to wake up, and every day I'm going to treat it like it's my last. Because at any time during this day, I could be standing in front of Jesus. My days could be finished. He could say, you're done. Come on home. I got to be ready to meet him. Amen. Amen. I got to be ready. And so if I live like that, I won't let nothing that is against him stay on me. So if that means that I got to forgive people fast, then I'm going to do it. Amen. I'm not going to harbor anything. And I'm saying this stuff so that you would see it. This is about us learning to keep going, to stay in that place. Go to Matthew 24, 13 and 14, the King James. Matthew 24, 13 and 14, King James. But he that shall endure unto the end. What does that say? Shall be saved. Now, this is talking about the end times. We're going to hear rumors of wars. And we're, we're getting a lot of the birth pains of all this type of stuff. But we're told to not worry about that because these things are going to happen. But he's saying that he that shall endure unto the end shall be saved. It doesn't mean that somebody who started out with Christ, well, you started out with him, so you're always with him. No, because you have a free will. So you got to start out with him and stay with him. How do I stay with him every day? I got to die daily. Man, I'm repeating the same old prayer every day. Romans 12, 1 and 2, I present myself to you today as a living sacrifice. I'm, I'm dying before God every day. Man, didn't you do that yesterday? <laughs> yeah, but today's a new day. The challenge is on again. And you know what the devil, he really does think he can get you today. Amen. In his mind, he thinks. They've been strong for 20 years, but I, I think I can get them tomorrow. I think I can get them tomorrow. So I've been telling people for a long time, 
I'm only one day away from failing. Pastor, you know all those scriptures and you've been saved for all that time. I'm only one day from failing. So I live with a sense of urgency so I don't take no days off. Amen. Amen. What about vacation? Ain't no vacation in the kingdom. Even when I go on vacation, me and my wife go on vacation, we still locked into the kingdom. Glory to God. You better know we still waking up reading our Bible. We don't ain't no. Well, you know, you just sometimes you're a pastor. You just got to set. I can't set this aside. So no matter where I'm at, I got to be in this. This got to be the governor over my life. And I've got to finish because it's not how I started. So how do I do this? I got to learn to be consistent. You need to discipline yourself. You need to get rid of distractions, stuff that's blocking you from staying in what God said you need to be in. You need to get that stuff out the way and learn to show God. Some of y'all might want to start trying to show me. Not that I'm God, but I pray for you. So it's like, man, I need to show my pastor I'm consistent. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'll be feeling this. See, I don't take people serious if they're not consistent. Let me just let me just go ahead and just be the one to say it. I got you, Pastor. I'm right there with you. And in my mind, no, you're not. <laughs> I want you, you know, you know, you can count on me. I can't count on you. Won't be calling you for very much of anything. Why? I don't see you. Huh? I don't see you. I don't pick nobody to do nothing for me that I don't see. Amen. If you have intermittent church attendance, you're not getting, I won't be asking you to do anything. Amen. That doesn't mean I don't love you. Amen. But me loving you and trusting you is two different things. Amen. Huh? I'm just saying. So you have to be present. You have to be seen. Then, then I recognize that you're one that's committed I know you're dedicated when I see you. If I don't see you, you might be dedicated to something, but it ain't what we're doing over here. And then if you're not going to be here, I know the ones that's dedicated, they'll let me know. Amen? Amen? Amen. But why? these are all things that are important that we in, have instilled within us so that we can finish, so that we can continue in such a way that we finish and that we finish strong. And so, but he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. Next verse. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. So the end ain't coming until the gospel is preached across the whole world. Every single person on the face of the planet is going to get a chance to hear the gospel. They have not heard it yet. So that's why we got work to do. We have continuous work. Go to the message translation on this. So uh, in the message translation, he says uh, these two verses still. Stay, staying with it, that's what God requires. See that? Staying with it, that's what God requires. Stay with it to the end. You won't be sorry and you'll be saved. All during this time, the good news, the message of the kingdom will be preached all over the world as a witness. A wit, uh, for a witness out of every country, and then the end shall come. Witness sake or whatever said. But anyway, so I got to stay with this. Look at your name and say, stay with it. Amen. Hmm. Now what happens? It becomes a habit. It's what you do. All of a sudden, you just, you just do it. There was probably a time in my life where, like, getting up and going to church wasn't even going to be on the table. But then you're talking about getting up with three little kids and having to be in San Diego by 8 o'clock driving from here? That's absurd. But we did it for three and a half years straight. You know what those people saw down there? Consistency. I had so many people over the years just come up to me and say, man, your family, I'm just blessed at seeing y'all because they knew where we came from. We wasn't late. We showed up for the 8 o'clock service, 
And we went to that service to get the word. And then we served in the 10 o'clock for three and a half years. So, you know, what my pastor saw consistency, dependability, trustworthiness. So if he didn't see all that, he would have never been able to hear God tell him that I have the call to preach on my life. Amen. Amen. This is how the kingdom works. And so we have to stay with it. Staying with it is what God requires. And go to Hebrews 9, 27. So remember this because it's not how you start. There are people I've, I've, I've known a lot of people who had seasons in God. And they had seasons where they were more on fire than other seasons. Well, that's not the way you want to live. You want to go from fire to fire. You want to be hotter today, glory to God, than you were when you first started. You want the devil to show up on you and say, man, I see you've been working out. You say, yes, sir. I'm way more powerful now. But I don't, you don't get there without consistency. You want to get your body in shape? Try going to the gym once a week. And then come and tell me how that's working out for you. Amen. You will make zero gains. But once it becomes a lifestyle, come on. You want to get to eating healthy? Come on, eat healthy two days a week and then eat bad the rest of them. The two days, nobody's going to know you've been eating good. Because there'll be no evidence. All we're going to see is that you've been eating bad. But if you're consistent, it's what you do. Those things that are going to help you, you have to learn to be consistent. Why is this important? With my walk with God, as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after that, what? So what does that mean? The state that I die in is the state that I stay in. And so it ain't about the state that I started in. No, what state did you die in? Did you die in a good place with Jesus? Because that's all that's going to matter. Now, here's the thing. How many of y'all know when you're going to die? None of us. Are. Now, we can speak words of faith and say, I got a long life, and we, we should be doing that. But truthfully, you do not know. And so what you got to do is live every day Ready. So if I stay ready, I don't have to get ready. And so I could meet him, boom, right now. But as long as I'm in that place, I've learned to be consistent. I'm consistent with my walk with God. Then I'm not worried about that. It's appointed to a man who wants to die and after this judgment. Go to Luke 19:12 now. Luke 19:12. And he he said. Therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. Next verse. And he called his ten servants and delivered unto them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy until I come. And so what does it mean? He's given them something. But he's saying, be a steward. And we've been given a life and we are to be a steward. And God wants us to multiply. You read that whole parable. He talks about one multiplied it, and that the people that did some with it were all blessed, but the one that hid it got in trouble and got what he had taken away. And so what we have to do is we have to do something with what we've been given. Amen. Come on, somebody. God has placed gifts and talents in the body of Christ. Don't sit on your gift. Don't bury your gift. Don't disregard your gift. You need to offer that unto God. Do something that is a part of you occupying so that when the king shows up, come on, don't have him find you doing nothing. When he shows up, are you going to be busy about his, his business? Or are you going to be so bogged down and caught up with your own situation? You know, I'm just dealing with so much and I've, I've gotten so much. You know, the way out of your problems is serving others. Come on, man. The way out of your problems is serving others. That, the way out of it is not just praying and waiting for things to change. Find you somebody to help. 
Get involved in the church. Get, figure out how to get signed up on something so that you can have some kingdom business to tend to and you didn't bury your talent. Now, we're going to close in a minute, but I want to make sure we understand something about Christianity. Christianity is not to supplement your lifestyle. Amen? Christianity is not to supplement your lifestyle. Christianity is to dominate your lifestyle. And so what happens is people say, I'm this and I'm that, but I'm also a Christian. No, that's out of order. Amen. No, you're supposed to say, I'm a Christian Amen. and I'm also this and that. Amen. And so I'm a Christian comes first because I'm a Christian is what dominates my life. Amen. I'm a Christian is what takes over. Colossians 3, 3 says, for you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. I think we'd have different results in the church if people understood this. God did not make a way for him to ride along with you. He gave you an opportunity to give your life to him so that now he can live through you and great things can be done as a result of your willingness to sacrifice unto him. Go to Luke 9.23. We'll look at this and then I want to pray for you. Luke 9.23. Through 26 NLT. Then he said to the crowd, if anyone of you wants to be my follower. Amen. Being a follower of Jesus is different than being a believer in Jesus. A believer. Anybody can say they're a believer, but are you following him? Then he said to the crowd, if anyone of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways. What? Take up your cross daily and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but are yourself lost or destroyed? Think about this, man. And if anyone is ashamed of me and my message, the son of man will be ashamed of that person when he returns in his glory and in the glory of the father and the holy angels. This is a boy, that's a terrible, terrible place to be in. So we don't say we're Christians. We live it. We show that we're Christians. We show it by our commitment, our dedication. We're not wavering in our stance. We're not Christians in some areas and some other areas we're not. We are staying Christians. Go to the message translation. This is what this whole thing is about. I think people have been preaching it the wrong way. They say one of two things. They say, come to Jesus and get your life. You know, you have a better life. You will, but you got to have a sacrifice. Then the other thing is a lot of times people, they want to just get to heaven. Get with Jesus so you can get to heaven. Yeah, but you don't know when you're going. And so we got to look at it and understand what he really wants from us. Then he told them what they could expect for themselves. How many of y'all would like, don't you like having expectations? Amen. Come on, let's say you, you go to something, uh, you go buy something, you have an expectation. It's going to work this way or whatever. Well, don't you like that being told up front? Let's say you have a contract with somebody. Don't you like when they tell you up front, this is what it's going to be? Yeah. How many of y'all like getting those surprises that you didn't know about? <laughs> Jesus did not try to sneak this in on anybody. He told them out the gate what they could expect. Then he told them what they could expect for themselves. Anyone? Look at your name and say, anyone. anyone. Okay. Listen, don't tell people about Jesus without telling them what's going to be required. Just let them know out the gate. Anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. You're not in the driver's seat. See, you're going to lose a lot of people right there. If you just tell them right there, you want Jesus? Okay, here's what you got to do. You got to let them drive. Oh, I ain't going to be able to make that. Okay, well, at least I ain't going to waste no time with you. You're not in the driver's seat. I am. Don't run from suffering. Embrace it. People paint Christianity as a walk in the park. 
Everything's going to be great. Oh, man, you're going to get attacked by the devil. You're going to have trials. You're going to have all kind of stuff, man. You're going to be tested. You're going to be pruned. You're going to have some stuff going on. You will win as long as you stay with it. But it ain't no walk in the park. He says, follow me and I'll show you how. Now, I want you guys to get this because there's a lot of this going on in our world. Self-help is no help at all. I just need to read some more motivational books. I want to just, you know, I feel like I can do it. I can, man, forget all that. Don't be cheering yourself up. You got to die. Get out the way. I'm just, I'm just feeling low and I'm just not feeling, die. Huh? They wouldn't want to pay me as a counselor because I come, they come up in there and they be talking about all these problems. I say, die. Amen. Huh? What do you mean? I'm just trying to be helped with this depression. Die. Get out the way. Amen. Self-help is no help at all. Self-sacrifice. I'm just giving you all the Bible. Self-sacrifice is the way. My way to finding yourself your true self. How do I find my true self? I got to self-sacrifice. I got to die so that God can reveal to me who the real me is. What good would it do to get everything you want and lose you, the real you? See, what people don't understand is we have an eternity, not just a little short time here on the earth. And the way we plan this it's got to be long term. We got to be doing this for the long term. If any of you is embarrassed with me and the way I'm leading you, that's like some people that are Christians only around certain people. But when they're in a group of people that ain't saved, they act like they ain't saved either. Well, if any of you is embarrassed with me and the way I'm leading you, know that the Son of Man will be far more embarrassed with you when he arrives in all his splendor in company with the Father and the holy angels. Boy. Hmm? You can continue. You can read that on your own time. But what we understand is this is what this costs. So for me to win at this, I got to give up everything. I got I to gotta let him have it all. Amen? I'm going to tell you, I'll take it further. Don't have dreams that God didn't give you. Because you're wishing to get yourself into something he don't want you in. But if you sacrifice yourself, you let him have his way, then now you can experience everything he has for you. And you will live a good life on planet Earth. But guess what? When your days are done, come on somebody, he'll be talking about, well done my good and faithful servant, amen? You do not want him saying, depart from me. I never knew you. So I'm never gonna be a preacher that allows you to be tricked and diverted away from what really matters. What matters is Jesus got to stay in front of you. He's got to be the driving force in your life. He's got to be the reason that you do everything you do. And you'll live victoriously here in the earth, and guess what? You're going to finish strong. See, when, I, when it's time for me to go to heaven, I want to be emptied out, man. And they're going to celebrate. They're going to be, man, this one here was, a, he was committed. And let that be said about you, amen? amen? You believe it, go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap, Amen. Let, let's close in prayer. Father, we just thank you in the name of Jesus for blessing us to be here today. Thank you for the power of your word. Thank you, Lord, that you give us power to continue. I speak supernatural endurance over this body of Christ. I speak supernatural strength, courage. I speak uh, a tenacity upon everybody under the sound of my voice. That we won't be those that tap out. We will not be those that fall off and quit. We're gonna stay the course. We're gonna finish our race. We thank you for that. And maybe you're here right now or maybe you're watching us and you don't know Jesus as Lord. We wanna invite you into this family. 
All you have to do is open your heart. It's free will, but if you give it over to God, he'll do something great with your life. I want you to repeat this prayer. Church, let's say it together or repeat after me. Jesus, please forgive me for all of my sins. I commit my life into your hands. This day, I am saved. Do with me as you please and fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Clap for the Lord, amen. Praise God, hallelujah.